Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am going to make this traveler's pocket notebook. It is a little bit shorter than your standard traveler's notebook, which makes it really great. It's perfect size for A6 notebooks, which you can get pretty easily on Amazon. I found them pretty easily. And I actually found two variety. So one with completely blank pages, which I feel like is great for sketching. So I'm making a couple of these for some of my crafty friends. And um, I don't know if they tend to sketch their ideas out beforehand, but I sometimes do. So I thought blank paper would be great. I also threw in a book with lined papers as well. And so let's make this. So I have this Sizzix Bigs die. It's designed by Caitlin Lazardi. It's called the Pocket Traveler's Notebook. And I have been waiting for this die for a long time. I was waiting for it to go on sale and then it got discontinued. So Sizzix stopped selling it. And I was searching for some other dies and I actually came across this on eBay. So glad to um, have finally found it because I bought the Companion Thinlets die set quite a while ago and I was I was just waiting for it to go on sale and it so rarely did. I never caught the sale anyhow and then um, before I knew it you can't even buy it anymore on Sizzix. So, um, but it's still out there. There are some retailers um, and maybe uh, folks who sell on eBay who have it and I was actually able to get a new one. So I have cut down some of my um, thicker heavyweight black cardstock. It's I think 110 pounds. And then I'm going to pick out some pattern papers for the um, outside front and back covers and also for the inside of the front and back covers. And being a big sty, uh, this can actually cut through some pretty thick material. So for example, things like chipboard, mat board, and uh, things like that. However, with a pocket size notebook like this, I didn't want something as thick as mat board. And um, I think medium, maybe lightweight chipboard would be okay. But in black, I only have medium weight, which is like really, really pretty thick. I, I tend to use that for my mini album covers. And for the notebook, I, I wanted a little bit of flex to it, but not a lot. So um, so that's how I landed on just using heavyweight cardstock as one of my layers, especially since on the spine, that does get doubled up. And then I've pulled out some of this really fun, they call it texture roll now. Uh, Sizzix sells this particular um, brand that I'm using and it, when I first stumbled on this product, they used to call it paper leather, but I think they're trying not to use the word leather anymore. So they call it texture roll, but the idea is that it's really, really strong paper, it's still a paper product, but you can wash it, you can wrinkle it, you can emboss it, you can, as a substrate, it's fantastic to work with because it's so durable, it's so strong, but you can still cut through it, you can still um, treat it with a lot of different media and techniques like like dry embossing, for example. And so it's it's really fun to work with. And you can literally, you know, put it through the washing machine to give it some additional texture as well if you want. It's actually the same sort of material that um, a lot of jeans on the back will have their brand uh, made out of this and sewn, you know, into that into the waistband at the top there. So, um, so if you're, you know, familiar with that, then that's what this is. That's what this material is. I am taking a moment to label my big style. And what I like to do is, um, label this so that I know, um, if I'm reading it, which way is up, um, and which way to position my paper. So I like to always die cut with the pretty side face down. 
and that way I feel like you get that cleaner, cleaner cut line, a, a slightly cleaner finish. And so if I'm reading that, then I know my front piece needs to be face down with the top oriented in such a way that I that reading the text is correct. And with this particular die, it's the you cut the exact same piece twice once for the front cover and once for the back cover. But when you get to the back cover, you um, actually need to rotate your paper 180 degrees. Doesn't matter for solid color cardstock. Um, it only matters if the paper that you're using is directional or if there is a specific orientation that you want to use it in. So for example, I'm using some geometric sort of deco art papers and technically they can be used, you know, uh, one way or you could rotate it 180 degrees and you could, you could still use it that way. I think the design, I think still works. It's just, I want to use it in a very specific orientation because I'm using the same pattern on the front and the back. And uh, same with the inside uh, front and back covers as well. So I just want to make sure that they are lined up correctly. So what I'll do is I'll trim down my pattern paper so that it's about maybe half an inch or so larger than what I really need it to be. And then I, uh, you saw me just then rotate it by 180 degrees. And that's so that the the pattern paper that is going to line the back cover is going to be oriented in the same way. And the other thing that I thought to do last minute, just again, saving myself a little bit of paper. Um, certainly you could, you could definitely cut the whole thing out and then trim it. But what I decided to do was just trim my pattern paper even more because I don't actually want the portion that is going to be the spine. That's the portion where you see that white foam with the three holes. That's your spine. And the spine for this size notebook is one inch wide. And the reason why I don't need that portion cut into my pattern paper is because the black cardstock, heavyweight cardstock that I'm using as my base it's already going to double up on the spine. That's how you attach your front and back cover is through um, layering the two spine pieces. And so it is going to be plenty sturdy uh, with that. Plus on top of that, I'll be using the uh, texture roll to uh, create a spine element as well. So that's going to be even more um, durability uh, along the spine. If I were to attach pattern paper to um, cover the front cover plus the spine, it's going to be really hard to score and fold across the spine uh, where that hinge is. And so what my plan is will be to just cover pattern paper and butt it up to the spine but not actually cross over. So you could save yourself a little bit of pattern paper um, because I feel like in any case you'll you'll want to trim it off so that you don't uh, end up with too many layers uh, going across that spine, to making it really hard to then fold and and then kind of stiff to open and close your notebook as well. So I'm taking a moment to uh, line the back of my pattern papers edge to edge with double-sided adhesive. So I decided to try out this um, these adhesive sheets. If you've seen me make albums before, you'll know that I, I do buy the wide rolls, five inch rolls of double-sided adhesive tape. And actually that would be rather perfect for this size album. I think that, that would, that's wide enough to cover um, this album. But I thought I would pull out the sheets just to see um, how sticky they are and, and whether I like working with them. Because often the larger the sheets or the roll, the wider the roll, the more economical it is in terms of when you work it out 
price per you know square inch, for example, because you know the the less that the manufacturer has to do to get the product um, in its final form the less expensive it is. So if they start with something large, but then they have to cut it down multiple times to get it to the size, the final size that they sell it in, um, it just takes more time, more effort, and, and all of that. And so it often ends up being more expensive when you work it out to, you know, price per you know square inch. So for example, a five inch wide roll cost less than uh, like a quarter inch uh, wide roll. So so if you can uh, work with larger sheets or wider rolls, then it can often be um, more economical. And that's the, that's the reason why I buy foam by the sheet as well. I've stopped buying foam strips uh, years and years ago because it's just so much more economical. And I find it easier to, to cut down my foam sheets to the width that I need. So for me, not only is it more economical, but I actually prefer, it's actually more convenient for me too. Instead of having to store multiple widths of foam, um, you know, sheets of, or foam rolls, I can just have um, flat foam sheets and use that uh, and cut it down to size as I need. I, I don't like to have a lot of these little scraps um, hanging around, so I am sort of piecing it together um, just to use it all up and, and fill this up. And the reason why I'm going for edge-to-edge -edge coverage is this is going to be the cover, so I want to just make sure that everything has really firm, solid contact with the base, which I've cut out of that black uh, heavyweight cardstock. And that way, um, there's just less potential for any lifting or um, anything like that. So hopefully this makes it a little bit longer lasting and, and a slightly better finish. So I'm lining this up so that they are oriented the way I want. And then what I'll do is um, rotate one of them by 180 degrees. <laughs> and I can cut all four of these together because this is a big style. It is meant to cut through thick material or if you're using it like I am here, multiple layers of a thinner material. And the sandwich is really easy. You just need a top and bottom cutting plate. I don't even have a Sizzix machine. This runs through perfectly fine on my platinum machine. As long as your machine can accept the uh, thicker platform, um, so, because these big dies are thick. So for example, I don't think these um, dies can go through your Gemini. Um, but your platinum, I think they'll work through cuddle bug. I've used them through the cuddle bug as well. So, um, so it's pretty versatile. And now that I have these all cut down, I can start to assemble my traveler's notebook. It's so easy. These projects, uh, come together pretty quickly and it is um, really fantastic for if you're you know stuck for ideas as um, gifts. These are these come together really quickly, and you don't really have to use a lot of paper too. Plus, you can buy the the notebooks to fill them really easily, and so really really fantastic. All you have to do is once you've cut your two covers, you can. Um, just overlap them in uh, this spine area here, this one inch um, strip. I'm using some strong score tape to line um, pretty much as much as I, I can of the spine. I really want this to have some solid, solid contact with each other. And I will also use some liquid adhesive too. So my favorite adhesive of choice is a PVA glue uh, by Lineco. It's called Neutral pH. It's a book binding glue. So it's great if for mini albums and scrapbooking and anything that you, you don't want to kind of have that yellow um, aging, you know, look. So that's important to, if you're using photos, projects where photos might make contact to make sure that 
all of the materials you're using from papers to glues and adhesives that they are acid free and um, archival safe and all of that good stuff. And the reason why I like to use a combination, and if you watch my videos and um, you find it re repetitive that I say this all the time, um, I, I'm aware that there are new people to my channel all the time, so that's why that's why I repeat myself. But the reason why I use a combination of both the dry adhesive um, and the liquid adhesive is because dry adhesive is going to be great for that instant stick and it will grab instantly and let you just continue working on your project, um, holding everything firm. However, there are some climates where dry adhesive might actually dry out and lose um, its strength, lose its stickiness completely, and your, your project could actually fall apart. Liquid adhesive, though, actually soaks into your paper because it is water-based. And all I've done just now was scored along the spine. Um, so it's just that one inch section, but you just want to score right where the ends of your two cover pieces overlap. And um, as I was saying with the glue, liquid adhesive or PVA glue is water-based and so it soaks into your papers and it's going to make for a nice permanent bond. And so you'll find that for anything you want to be durable, long-lasting, that um, especially if you're gifting it and you don't know where you know, you're um, the person that you're giving it to, you don't know where they may um, move to. Ultimately, they may go from a climate that's not that humid to a climate that's very humid. And, um, and so if you want that assurance that your projects will hold up, using some liquid adhesive will, will help to ensure that um, that it stays longer lasting and a little bit more durable. So speaking of durability, I want to reinforce the folds of my cover with Tyvek. And again, I know if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've heard me say this before, but this, what I'm using here is um, actually Tyvek wristbands. They come sold at, connected as a full sheet that you can actually print out. Uh, information on because it's actually meant for people who are maybe organizing events and they want to give wristbands to folks to indicate that they uh, paid or maybe that they have access to something special and it's just a bit of promotion. I buy them in um, black, which you're not going to print on, <laughs> but you can get them in a variety of different colors as well. And what Tyvek is, is a material that is tear resistant and water resistant. Uh, the fact that it's water resistant doesn't really matter too much, but it's the tear resistance that is uh, of benefit here because it's actually going to help keep that um, fold as it um, gets used over time. It's just paper after all. So you know, over time it could tear, it could um, wear down. And not that I necessarily expect uh, the person I'm making this for to keep it for ages and ages, but being that it is a traveler's notebook that um, can actually be used for a long time, well past when you've filled up the actual notebooks that you can put inside this because it's designed so that you can actually as you fill up notebooks, you can pull those out, swap in new ones. And so the idea is that the cover could be used um, for a long time and you just need to swap in new notebooks as you, as you fill up the ones that were originally there. So, you know, I'd like to try to make the cover as durable as I can so that she can use it for as long as she would like, hopefully. And whether that's, you know, a week or a year, hopefully um, this will hold up for her. So that Tyvek will help to reinforce that hinge. And as it gets, you know, um, opened and closed, it won't um, tear, you know, over time uh, or wear down. 
So I am going to uh, just attach my pattern papers now so that I can cover that, that Tyvek and um, and I'm being careful to, I've already trimmed off, I um, cut this down to size so that it's still slightly a little bit larger than what I need, but I did trim it so that I can, um, as I'm placing this piece on the inside covers here, that they go up to the score line, but they don't pass it. And, and that's important because you want to, uh, you don't want to go over the score line. That's going to make it hard to open and close or really hard to, um, opening is not a problem. It's just closing it down nice and tight would be more the issue there because you just don't want bulk um, built up over that score line and over that fold. And of course, whatever adhesive you use, you do want to make sure to burnish it really well because... With a double-sided dry adhesive, burnishing will actually try to push, you know, it actually pushes all the air out between the paper and the adhesive. And air is what can potentially dry out your double-sided adhesive and, and have it lose its strength over time. So by burnishing it, you're going to ensure that you're getting as much air out as possible and um, getting as firm of a stick as possible. If you're using a liquid adhesive, it uh, burnishing can be really beneficial because it will help to start to push that liquid adhesive into the paper and as well it's going to spread that adhesive out so that you don't see those glue lines and you don't have those um, streaks or, or bumps or anything so regardless of the type of glue that is um, your preference you'll you'll want to burnish um, red line uh, glue is our tape is really great too. Uh, that's really strong. Um, I, I haven't, I tend not to buy it too much anymore because it has the plastic, uh, liner <laughs> that you have to cut through and you can't tear. Whereas score tape, I find just as strong as red line tape, but you can, it has the paper liner, so you can just tear it in the same way you would um, other double-sided adhesive tapes. And so um, another good glue to use, especially if you are working with thinner papers, and these papers I didn't mention, they're actually from, I bought them on off of Craft Stash, and they are from the Textures brand by Lou Collins, and I think this was her Art Deco collection. And the person I'm making for this for is um, she's on YouTube as Stamper Girl, and she's a crafty friend of mine. You might have seen her on some of my live streams, and I think I I did, yeah. It wasn't a project; it was just an unboxing video. And she she just made a comment that she really loved these papers, and so um, that's why I thought to use these papers for her. And I'll probably send her. Um, either a good portion of the uh, what's left of the paper pad or or perhaps all of it. No, I'm going to keep some for myself. Sorry, Delise. I, I, I won't send you everything. I, I have to save some for myself, <laughs> but I'll say I'll send her quite a bit. And so um, it's fantastic. The thing that I really like about this paper is um, it's got a really silky finish to it. It's really nice um, tactile. Um, I uh, I know I'm I'm doing something that I'm not explaining here, but don't worry because I take all of this out. I I skipped a step <laughs> because you can still see my Tyvek, all of that, um, all the the ends of my Tyvek there. But essentially, what I'm doing is I am adding the cording to um, the spine here. And that's what's actually going to hold our notebooks in. This is when I realized, wait a sec, I can't be doing this now. It's still so untidy in there. So um, I thought that maybe I would bring in some pattern paper because what I had left over in terms of offcuts from cutting down my covers, there was a one inch section that would have been perfect in terms of the width, but just didn't look right to me. So I'm just going to add some more black um, 
heavyweight cardstock. So really the spine is really strong and, and thick. There's, it ends up being three layers of cardstock. So it doesn't really need, you know, the, the patterned paper to feel, to feel substantial. And what I'm going to do is just glue this down right over, right over top of, um, of this, but I do need the holes though. I do need to transfer those holes because we need to, as you saw me do a moment ago, we need to um, loop our cording, our elastic cording through there. Now, there are multiple times in the course of making this uh, traveler's notebook or pocket traveler's notebook that I thought I was finished. Um, and you'll see me actually cover up that center hole. Um, not a problem if you have what I have, which is the big bite from We Are Memory Keepers. So this is, um, really fantastic because it can punch holes that are one eighth of an inch wide or three sixteenths of an inch wide, and it doubles as an eyelet or grommet setter as well. And because it's, um, this was different from your crocodile, which is a handheld punch, also very sturdy. But it's different because it's it's got that um, wide throat where you can punch really, really far in. And it does also have this guide that you can set so that you can punch in a uh, consistent at a consistent depth uh, into your paper. So I just took a moment to um, to just punch my three holes and then I'm going to glue this down, um, covering that center hole, which I thought I uh, would be fine to do because I didn't think that this would need any sort of closure. But in the end, I, I did add a, um, a closure to this. So I want to make sure that those holes are perfectly lined up. So I just poked, um, put my uh, pokey tool through those holes and uh, each of the three holes and made sure that it was uh, well lined up. Okay, so now for for the uh, cording. This is two millimeter thick cording. You could get away with one millimeter, but I rather like the, the stronger, thicker cording. It does make um, this process a little bit tougher because the holes aren't super big, especially when we get to the center when we have to double it up. But I start from the outside and then um, on the inside is where you want to see the cording go down the length the length of the uh, book from top to bottom. On the outside, the cording goes left to right, and so from the outside, you should just see the cording go uh, from hole to hole. And here, now I just here's where you, both um, where you need to kind of get the two ends through as a double layer. So this is going through a second time through that hole. Now the die is really fantastic. They've thought about this. They made the two holes on the side slightly smaller and the hole in the middle because it does need to accommodate um, two, you know, uh, stretches of cording. They did make that center hole bigger. It's just that when I had to cover the um the inside of my spine here i had to punch out my own holes and three sixteenths of an inch would have been too big of a hole and so um so i'm finding it a little bit challenging to thread the the second uh bit of cording through here but if you find that to be the case just um kind of cut your cording so that it's not frayed, that will help, and also try to cut it at an angle because that sharper angle might help as well. And from the opposite end, you need to do the same thing. So you should have a stretch of cording that needs to go through that center hole again and meet up with um, the other loose end of your plastic cording so that you can then tie these two ends together and they'll meet up in the same, um, basically the kind of the same column, giving you the fourth uh, set of strings that you can then attach either another book to, or you'll see what I do in a second video. I'll actually make a little folder insert, which is part of the Thin Lids companion die set that goes with this big sty 
and and that's it. I mean, our our book is pretty. Our traveler's notebook is pre- is pretty done here. Um, however, what I wanted to do was to add some of this really fantastic gold, um, paper leather or sorry texture roll. That's what they're calling it now, and it's it's really awesome. Um, it used to be when I first uh, learned of this product, it used to be that they only had it in some basic colors like white, black, and craft. But Sizzix now is selling it in, you can get it in a lot of these uh, fantastic metallics like gold, uh, silver, I think they have one in rose gold as well. And then I think I saw the latest um, uh, line of texture roll is in pastel colors. So really soft, beautiful pastels. So pretty fun, really, um, really great, very durable material. But I love, I love using the gold as just an accent on the spine, because I think I think it would be too much. You could you could actually make your entire traveler's notebook cover out of this material, and that would make it really really durable. But I wanted a little bit of. Um, pattern and I I didn't want too much gold because it's it's rather shiny <laughs> um, so I just like that that little accent plus I like using it just on the spine like this because it does also remind me of um, like leather bound books or you know those old books when you make um, books by hand sometimes they have this this design to them where there is this extra piece of um, material that wraps around the spine across to the front and back covers so that's sort of what it, it reminds me of and I love that look um, makes it really kind of look like a, a book in that way and also my my personal little um, kind of uh, design preference with Traveler's Notebook is that I, I kind of don't like to see the cording um, along, I, even though it's not a lot, it's just a little bit on the top and bottom. And and I've seen people do some really cute things with that where uh, they hang some charms um, on those that those bits of cording at the top there. I just personally don't like the look of it. So um, by wrapping it, I um, can cover that for one. Second, I um, I get that nice kind of leather bound book look, which I love just as a as, as an aesthetic, uh, another aesthetic de- detail. And as well, being that this is paper leather, um, it's super durable. So again, it's just going to strengthen our spine. And I'm only putting adhesive on the front and back cover. I'm not. I'm not attaching this to the actual spine itself. And in fact, I'm not. I'm not trying for a super tight um, uh, wrap either. I want to give it some space so that it can it can curve a little bit. And I'm using again a combination of um, dry adhesive tape. I like to get dry adhesive tape all the way to the edge, the outside edge of everything. So the outside edge of the um, paper leather and the outside edge of the the cover as well. And then I like to just squiggle on some liquid adhesive to really make sure it it makes um, it has a nice permanent bond. But you can see when you open it up, because we didn't glue it down in the center, it has some flex to it. It, it has that little bit of um, curvature to it. So um, you wouldn't get that if you tried to glue that down to the spine. So that so that's why I do it that way. And I I did crumple up uh, my my um, texture roll paper a little bit just to give it some of that crinkly. Um, it, I just don't want it to look so new um, <laughs> and shiny. And you can definitely do a little or a lot of that. The texture roll material is really durable, really strong, resistant to being torn. And um, see, it looks kind of like worn leather when you get some of those crinkles in. Um, You could even put it through the wash too, if you wanted. So it's really, really fantastic. So um, here's where I realized, wow, when all the books are in and everything, um, 
maybe this could benefit from <laughs> from a from a closure. So what I'm gonna do is um, I've already covered up the, the hole on both sides, so I don't know where my original hole is, but it, it won't matter anyway because if I miss where the original hole was, um, no one's gonna know. It's covered from both sides. And so all I'm gonna do is just uh, aim for about halfway in or halfway down, which I can measure with the guide that's actually on the um, my big bite here. The thing I'm trying to be really careful of is to not accidentally punch through my cording. And if I was um, smarter, I, I would have done this first before I actually um, <laughs> before I actually did the binding. And because I snipped off the ends, I didn't want to undo the knot. And, and risk you know not having a um, a long enough length to actually <laughs> to actually tie the knot again. Um, so I, I managed I did manage to get that uh, punched and I'm gonna use that same two millimeter thick cording. Now I have I have this um, I have to look up the name of it. I've forgotten what it is already, but it's basically um, lets you. Um, you can clamp this down. These are just metal clips and you can clamp it down into your cording. And what this achieves is it, it acts as a way to um, prevent this cording from sliding through that hole. And um, it avoids having to tie a knot, another knot, because there's already the lot, the knot that is uh, holding our two ends together, and so I don't want to bulk up the the center of this traveler's notebook more than I need to. Um, so that's where these come in handy because you don't have to tie a big knot there. Uh, these can sit rather flat and and flush uh, because it sort of. Um, it the metal is going to keep it from sliding through and so I am just making sure that I leave um, I don't want this too tight I, I want a little bit of slack there because if it's too tight then it's going to pinch into the covers and either um, start to to crumple your cover a little or maybe the cover starts to wear into the cording a little and, and wears that down faster. So you, you just kind of have to play it by ear. You want it tight enough so that it holds everything in there nice and snug. Not that anything's gonna fall out, it's just more so that it doesn't um, spring you know open. And then, um, but you want it to be um, you know, loose enough so that it's not going to actually crush, you know, uh, dig into your, your cover. And I, I got it a little too loose, so I tried to pull my um, cording as much through. Once you've clamped this down, especially if you clamped it super tight, um, <laughs> you, you really won't be able to pull it through. But I managed to get it to move a little bit. But I'm going to do another um, dry fit here just to make sure that it's not super, uh, it's not too loose because, you know, if it's too loose, then, um, then it's just not going to serve its purpose. Um, but I think I got it okay. Uh, worst case is if it's too loose, you could always just sacrifice the clamp, um, and, and just pull apart the, the clamp and then, um, and then, clamp a new piece on so that's all that's all there is to that but once you get this um to where you want it then you can just snip off the excess and you can see how flush and, and how flat that sits and that will prevent you from pulling the ends out and um and you'll see what i do to prevent you from pulling the entire loop um uh, from the inside from pulling it all the way out and that's just going to be to attach a charm and so I've got uh, a variety of different charms I thought this little dragonfly would look super cute and so um, the way that I like to attach this is I just have one of these um, lobster claw and a jump ring um, the jump ring I find helps it to lay flat a little bit better so I connect that to my charm and then connect um, my lobster claw clasp to it. 
on the other end. And then that way I can just um, clip this right onto that cording. And so with that, with that charm there, you're not going to be able to pull um, from the inside, you can't pull the cording out completely because that charm is, is, uh, there. And because it's, uh, on a, um, jump ring or on, and the lobster claw, um, she can always, you know, take that off when, when she's done using this and she doesn't, you know, um, you know, maybe wants to swap it out for something else or whatever, she can always just, uh, un unclasp, clasp that and then, um, and then put it onto something else if she wants, like a zipper or whatever. And uh, before I, I give this her last minute, I remembered that these papers are white core. <laughs> so um, so I just want to clean up that white core on the edges with a little bit of ink. So I'm using some black ink. You could use um, whatever you've got that you think would coordinate with your papers, whether that's like a vintage photo or, or something like that. But it helps to just um, take that stark, stark white out. I'm not looking to actually do much vignetting. I really just want to cover the white. Um, so I'm not really inking onto the paper so much as I am just inking the edges of the paper. I thought I was done. And then I decided, um, because I use the same papers on the front and the back, and I use the same papers on the front inside and the back inside, it's really hard to tell what, uh, which side the front is because it's pretty identical. So what I thought I would do is pull out the companion Thinlets die set, which has a lot of dies, and I'll show you in a separate video um, because I thought I was done after I added uh, what I'm about to add, which is a pocket. But then I uh, decided to add another element to this traveler's notebook. And seeing as how this video is already kind of long, I, I'm going to include that on, on, in a second video. So I'll post that and, and link to it at the end of this one later. But part of the thin list die set, there is a die that cuts out uh, this pocket, which is kind of cute. And you can put it... See, even I was having a hard time figuring out what the front and back was. I, I had to turn it around just now. Um, and the pocket's really great. It's got two glue tabs, so it's only attached at the bottom and the side edge. But it's kind of cool because it does have this slit in the front and so you can you can put shorter things into this pocket it'll still um, have access and go all the way down to the bottom but you can put in shorter things and and still be able to grab those out um, which is kind of nice um, but it is a nice tall pocket so you can put taller things and it'll, it'll hold it in there just just fine and the way that I like to attach my um, pockets is I do like to put the bottom uh, touch the bottom glue tab first and then um, this is optional but it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine when you slide something into a pocket and it, it won't go all the way down to the bottom because it's getting it's getting caught or hung up on on that that little lip that is created by the glue tab so to solve that you just need to run a bit of scotch tape right over and in fact you can run the scotch tape over the fold or the score line as well and that just um, strengthens that um, that fold not that this that's a hinge that's going to get open and closed any because once you glue the pocket shut it's just going to stay in that in that position but that little bit of score tape just evens out the transition between um, the cover and the uh, the extra layer uh, created by the glue tab. And that way you can slide things in all the way to the bottom really easily. And then you just need to attach the um, the side. I, I just decided to use uh, just liquid adhesive um, instead of the combination because it's such a thin, it's such a narrow glue tab. It's only about a quarter of an inch. And uh, in any case, I would have used liquid adhesive just to really make sure that there's a strong bond there and that it's well stuck in. So here's a final look at my um, 
pocket traveler's notebook uh, made which I'm making for uh, my crafty friend Stamper Girl who's here on YouTube as well. I'll link to her channel in the description box below. Um, it's really fantastic, great size. It holds A6 size notebooks which you can easily buy on Amazon. So at least if you're watching and you need more refills, just search Amazon for A6 um, <laughs> traveler's notebooks and you should find it really easily. Now I do have a fourth band here and um, and I thought I would just leave it there but then uh, last minute like I mentioned I decided I would actually fill that and so you'll see that in my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're curious about any of the products that I used, I'll try to link to as much of, of um, as many of them as I can still find in the description box below. And if you are subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. If you haven't yet, I hope you've enjoyed it enough to where you will subscribe today. Thank you again and until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.